Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello, everyone, and thanks again for joining us for this uh, first day of the three-day weekend, Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. Up first, uh, breakup map, and again, uh, all broke up here south of the Brooks Range, and uh, we've got, let's see, mostly open now on the Noatak River, uh, which means there's still some ice there, and then some open, up north there are the Saguan and Colville rivers on the north slope. And moving to the fire danger, still some areas of here, Copper River Basin up into the uh, southeast interior there along and north of the eastern Alaska range in, in those areas there. Really haven't seen much precipitation at all. Maybe a little bit of an increase in the winds. Uh, we'll keep it kind of on the high side there. So moving from there to the satellite imagery, uh, two main areas of clouds. One right here moving south to north high pressure over the eastern gulf of alaska in the panhandle and on into western north america providing that southerly flow on the western side of the ridge there and the front right through here now edging its way eastward uh, just getting past kodiak island more or less there uh, the way it looks on the satellite imagery anyway so the rain should be tapering off back to the west and kind of an uh, enhancement of the moisture you can see in the last couple of frames there is it moves northward in those southerly winds up toward the North Gulf Coast. Right through here you can see it kind of expanding and that's uh, going to keep rain going and actually increase the rain along the southern coast of the Kenai Peninsula and a ways inland and also up into Prince William Sound, North Gulf Coast, heaviest amounts over toward uh, Portage and back down toward Seward area and of course Whittier with uh, more scattered in nature type precipitation as you move inland and Cook Inlet, a little too downslopey for uh, much in the way of any rain, but plenty of clouds. A few sprinkles, uh, say all the way from Anchor Point up to Turnigan Arm to Eagle River, Palmer, Madanuska Valley. You don't expect much over the next 24 hours. A uh, few breaks right through here. Otherwise, the interior looking pretty cloudy today and just uh, solid overcast there from the greater Fairbanks area eastward to the border and northward up toward Arctic Village. And then a trough axis right back through here with some shower activity and clouds, but a fair amount of clearing up on the Arctic coast today. And uh, got a good look at the uh, ice up there. And it looks like the shore fast, areas of shore fast from about Barrow eastward beginning to break up and uh, move off the coast. And that pattern's forecast to continue for the next uh, several days as it all continues to slowly melt. Otherwise, uh, some breaks here behind this trough along the west coast. And then another mass of clouds way out to the west. You can see low pressure here right in this area, swinging up toward the Russian Far East. South flow becomes southeast, keeping all the rain out in that area. And another portion down here to the south that's splitting off and uh, kind of pushing eastward there. That brought some rain into the central Aleutians today, but uh, some sunshine breaking out, especially on Alaska Island up across the Alaska Peninsula, all the way up in the northeastern Bristol Bay, and then the southeast coast. Uh, pretty good day today. Uh, some areas saw sunshine, some more than others. Looked pretty good down to the south toward uh, Ketchikan Dixon entrance, and then high stuff filtering in eastward here. High cirrus type clouds over the uh, along the coast and up to the north there, Skagway, and uh, those areas in toward Juneau. On the uh, chart today, Front roughly in this position here, again, near or just east of uh, Kodiak State Airport now. So uh, precipitation tapering off to the west, south to north flow there, keeping gale force winds in along the north Gulf Coast today. Into tonight, uh, going 35 knots, that includes Prince William Sound, has a gale warning out all night long tonight for uh, east southeast winds up to 35 knots. And those drop off considerably here as you get under the high center uh, right off the southeast coast there, just some high stuff moving through that uh, uh, surface ridge there. 
as a, kind of a westerly wind flow through the upper ridge, but uh, even more sunshine down to the south. And uh, cloud showers really from the Copper River Basin northward to the Brooks Range. Uh, didn't see any lightning strikes today. Uh, even back here where there's a little more clearing, but really nothing much in the way of any uh, thunderstorm activity, just uh, showers breaking out mostly. That doesn't mean there won't be here from about this time, say into the evening. And then the uh, main trough axis back there to the west along this band of clouds from uh, roughly Togiak Bay all the way up uh, to roughly Point Lay and breaking out behind that, dry conditions, light winds, areas of fog. And then the next front out in this area uh, with the low pressure area here, one scooting up into Russia and that carrying all the moisture, most of it up with it. But this portion here sliding eastward and the forecast for tonight, uh, that front doesn't make much more eastward progress there. Uh, the first low weakens into a trough up there and then the next one, 991 millibars, uh, probably going to bring some uh, at least small craft advisories out for the area in advance of the front and then less wind and then some northwesterlies picking up uh, back to small craft advisory levels there, mostly west of uh, Kiska Island, particularly Shimmy and Attu. Otherwise, eastern bearings staying nice, same thing, no change to the eastern Aleutians. Light winds, partly to mostly cloudy skies, areas of fog here possible all the way up to the uh, Bering Strait and even the Chukchi Sea and actually along the Arctic coast as well. Otherwise, we've got some uh, rain and snow showers scattered across the Brooks Range, uh, back to the northwest, uh, probably still in the form of snow, whatever falls, but whatever does fall will be quite light, no accumulations expected. Uh, a few breaks out here, Yukon Kuskokwim Delta, up into northern Kuskokwim uh, uh, Valley, and then uh, even more clearing possible there north of the Brooks, or north of the Alaska Range, into the Tanah Valley, 40 mile country. Copper River Basin, scattered showers along the mountains, and then the heaviest precipitation there into the Kenai Peninsula, Resurrection Bay, Seward, up into western Prince William Sound. Uh, see the heaviest rain here over the next, uh, well, for tonight. And again, uh, mostly cloudy, occasionally wet for Kodiak, so not ending completely, but it won't be as heavy as it was out in advance of the front. And otherwise, uh, rain trying to push over to Yakutat probably won't make it. 1,022 millibar, millibar high there, keeping the southeast coast pretty good through tonight. And then for Sunday, not much change there. We'll be seeing uh, surges of clouds coming across the northern panhandle and maybe even some lower stuff out along the coast. Uh, but it'll be a rain-free day tomorrow again and probably Monday as well with uh, areas of sunshine, some seeing more than others, but pretty light winds as well to go along with that. And then we've got some moderate showers here, upper level low, cold upper low, and uh, low freezing levels with that. So anything above about 2,000, 2,500 feet, that'll be in the form of snow uh, through the mountainous areas there from Kodiak up along the western Alaska Range, the Aleutian Range, uh, northeast uh, Bristol Bay. And then this front uh, edging eastward, but beginning to weaken now, especially tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night. That's going to continue to pull surges of moisture northward. So a wet day tomorrow. Tonight, tomorrow for the North Gulf Coast, uh, over to Cordova, just a chance of rain in Valdez. And uh, most of the precipitation cutting off along the coast range there. It'll be a little more scattered and showery across the Copper River Basin, enhancing again along the Alaska Range with that southerly flow up toward Windy Pass and back toward uh, Denali. But uh, north of the mountains through the central Ontario, looking pretty good with some uh, variable clouds, mostly sunny skies and mild temperatures. In fact, uh, probably the warmest location will be here over the southern southeast coast. Temperatures will try to approach 70 tomorrow, and they won't be doing too bad here with the sunshine in the central interior. Uh, leftover moisture with a cold upper trough there, scattered rain and snow showers, uh, but the whole air mass gradually warming. Southeast flow here pulling warmer air northwestward, even out to the Arctic coast. High pressure holding over the northern Bering Sea, the Chukchi, light wind conditions, low clouds, areas of fog to go along with that. That pattern actually will extend all the way down to the Alaska Peninsula and Aleutians. Uh, southeast winds start to increase here for the Fox Islands, uh, easterlies, and uh, really not so much for the Alaska Peninsula. It could be a partly to mostly sunny day tomorrow. And then some uh, precipitation on that trough farther on out to the west. Taking a look at uh, Memorial Day, that uh, low moves northward here, or another low comes in. 
and uh, about 994 millibars. So again, uh, gusty winds behind that, especially in, the front, in advance of the front, you could see some small craft advisories, periods of rain and uh, moisture coming northward here, well out in advance of the front. Could bring uh, some rain late Monday, more likely Monday night with that moisture coming into the eastern Aleutians. Otherwise, periods of rain from about Nikolsky all the way back out to Shimia. Cloudy skies, nice here along the southwest coast. Uh, and then an area of precipitation showers more concentrated, maybe just flat out rain here. They're up over the, uh, say, the Kobuk Valley area up toward the Brooks Range becomes more showery. And uh, isolated thunderstorms here in some of the taller clouds that develop during the afternoon over the interior. Otherwise, South Central Alaska, that front dissipates, just some leftover showers, and should see an increase in the clearing Monday afternoon, especially for Cook Inlet, as well as other areas here, even the North Gulf Coast. Uh, but the showers will be hanging on in toward Monday evening. Just a risk of a shower here from Yakutat in toward Elfin Cove. High pressure at the surface holding on the southeast coast, and that should uh, take this slug of moisture and direct it northwestward. So uh, mostly sunny day coming up for Monday there again, light wind conditions and just isolated rain and snow showers on the Arctic coast there. Temperatures edging their way upward, especially aloft. And for the temperatures this afternoon, there's a 72 degree reading over at Stewart, otherwise 66. Catch a can in the net, 54 at Sitka, up to 59 at Skagway, Yakutat, 51 degrees, more clouds there, and even uh, a lot more clouds in the wind here with some precipitation for Cordova. Back towards Seward, 43 degrees today, 47 in Whittier, lower 50s Cook Inlet, both at Kenai and Homer, just 42 degrees at Kodiak State Airport. Uh, gonna have to do something to shape those temperatures up. Uh, 50 up there at Talkeetna and 49 at Golcana. Interior, upper 40s to mid 50s, 56 at Fairbanks, 58 at Fort Yukon. Back into the 40s here for the Brooks Range. And uh, not too bad up on the Arctic Coast. Now Point Lay, up to 49 degrees. And Barrow, 34, 36 at Kaktovik with uh, 45 Kotzebue during 50 degrees. And then back down to 37 at Shishmaref, about the same in Nome and 40s away from the coastline, mid to upper for the southwest interior, upper 30s along the coast, mid 40s here for the Aleutians, a little cooler out towards Shimia, lower 40s for the Pribilofs, 40s to mid 50s, Alaska Peninsula up in the northeast Bristol Bay. For tonight, lows upper 30s there, and near 40 out over the Aleutians with 35 for the Pribilofs, 30s in the interior here for the most part. There will be some areas in the colder valleys dropping below freezing or into the upper 20s, Otherwise, uh, looks like you won't hit the zero degree isotherm until you get up toward the Brooks Range and then on out to the Arctic coast there. Otherwise, uh, kind of a mild night, mid 40s for the southern and southeast coast. Then tomorrow, those temperatures uh, push back up toward the 67 to 73 degree range here, depending on how much sunshine you get. And uh, looks like even 70 trying to show up there around Juneau on towards Skagway. Otherwise, more clouds, rain, lower to mid 50s, even upper 40s along the coast, uh, southern Alaska, lower to mid 60s, eastern interior, cooler back to the west, and uh, 35 to 40 north of the Brooks Range. Flying weather, IFR developing here along and on the east side, eastern slopes of the western Alaska Range, southern coast of the Kenai Peninsula, western Prince William Sound, VFR for the Panhandle. IFR out here along the coast, another band there across uh, St. Matthew Island, just northeast of the Perbloffs, and yet another band with a front farther out to the west. For tomorrow afternoon, uh, that begins to diminish. Now we're just marginal here along the Alaska Range. Marginal VFR north Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound. Areas of working into the Copper River Basin, especially the southern slopes of the central Alaska Range. IFR western Prince William Sound. Passes Anatovic and Attigan. We'll see another VFR day tomorrow. Lake Clark and Merrill, just call it marginal at times throughout the entire day. Same forecast for rainy. Lowest conditions on the eastern entrances of all three passes. Windy, marginal VFR, southern approach. Otherwise, VFR to the north. And Isabel, VFR, Mentasta, VFR. With uh, pos actually Mentasta, possible marginal VFR in the southern approach uh, tomorrow and tomorrow afternoon. But Whittier will be VFR and Portage, uh, uh, marginal VFR. IFR possible, low IFR on the eastern entrance. And for Chilkoot and White, VFR. Freezing levels here, uh, big ridge here over western North America, warmer temperatures. 
and a north-south flow here also uh, puts a jet about in this location as well, 2,000 feet holding over much of interior Alaska on out into the Bering Sea. And uh, icing threats, uh, surges of moisture coming northward, but really not getting too far inland, but definitely along the North Gulf Coast, Kenai Peninsula, Kodiak, and then tapering off back to the west. And then some more icing out here coming into the central Aleutians with that next front. Winds aloft jet stream uh, sailing down from the northwest out here, well to the south, takes a turn to the north-northwest, big ridge over the western North America, 60, 80 knots here coming uh, northward. Of course, that's carrying all that moisture and rain with it. And for 9,000 feet, same pattern, 25 to 30 knot winds along the North Gulf Coast, much lighter for the Panhandle, 10 to 15 in the interior out of the east. Strongest winds of that next storm center out there, 35 to 45 knots around the center, and about the same at 3,000 feet, call it 20 to 40 knots here, flowing around that low center just north of the Aleutians, and a trough here into the southwest interior. Could get 25 knot winds through here, and up to 30 for the North Gulf Coast, dropping back to 5 to 15 for the Panhandle, about the same in the interior. Turbulence-wise, the best chance will be in this shaded area, it'll be a little more extensive, light to isolated moderate chop below about four to 5,000 feet. Uh, Cape Yakutaga westward through the entire shaded area, especially the Alaska Range on down to Fognac Island, otherwise smooth, and then a chance of some turbulence out here. Southeast winds for this area, northwest winds for Shimmy and at too. And after the break, I'll be back with the marine forecasts. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm Dave Snyder, and joining me again is Cindy Preller. She's the Tsunami Program Manager for Alaska Region's National Weather Service. Thanks again for joining us, Cindy. Thanks for having me back, Dave. Sure thing. And I, I love saying Tsunami Program Manager for Alaska's National Weather Service because that's not weather. Why is the Tsunami Program part of the National Weather Service? Well, it's because the Weather Service absolutely rocks at warning people for every kind of, you know, devastating natural hazard. Mm -hmm. the, the mission of the Weather Service is to protect life and property. And so how does the Tsunami Warning Center in Palmer, Alaska, which is a very unique office, again, within the Weather Service, it's not weather, how do those folks help us protect life and property? The National Tsunami Warning Center in Palmer is a national warning center and we analyze seismic traces 24-7 okay. all around the world. So when there's an earthquake anywhere on the planet, we see it and mm -hmm. analyze it within minutes. Within minutes, and, within and there's minutes. actually a goal to have it under, was it five minutes? Mm -hmm. we, if there okay. is a tsunami warning to be issued for continental America, okay. um, yeah, we must get that out or wow. shoot to get that out in five minutes. Okay. Now, that, that's not something I have ever learned to do, so I know it would be a struggle for me to do that under <laughs> probably hours, but it is fascinating to watch, and, and the, the office is open on a regular basis for tours, right? Absolutely. Come by okay. Friday. Okay. Yep, every right. Friday at 1, 2, and 3 p.m., and there are open public free tours. And they're, it's the most interesting place on the planet. You really should check it out. Okay, and, and the, the, the office team is made up of of people that are earth scientists, not meteorologists or atmospheric scientists. Talk about some of the types of people that work there. Right, we are out of place in our <laughs> National Weather Service, but um, yeah, we are geologists, uh -huh. geophysicists, um, oceanographers. We even have an astrophysicist on board, mm -hmm. uh, uh, computer software architects, yeah. um, electronic technicians that are brilliant and innovative. Our software is all written in-house. Our instrumentation is designed in-house. Okay. So it's a really, really unique place, and it's just a couple handfuls of people that work there. So Sure. Yeah. One of my favorite ways to get a tsunami alert message is on Twitter. Right. And I can follow the, the Twitter address, and we'll put that up on the screen for you there. But it's usually a very quick message that tells you initially what the magnitude of an earthquake could be and about where its uh, epicenter was. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other ways that you can get that alert message? Well, I, Twitter's my favorite, too. Yeah. And you don't even need a Twitter account to receive right. it. So you, it right. just comes in like an SMS message. Mm -hmm. But um, you can also receive it via email, mm -hmm. weather radio, of course, mm -hmm. um, the crawler on your television screen, mm -hmm. uh, on the Internet, Google Alerts, right. um, marine radio if you're out in harbors and boats. Mm -hmm. Actually, marine radio is probably... Yeah, it is a good one. That's our partnership with the Coast Guard. We're really yeah. grateful for that, yeah. absolutely. But there's a variety of ways in dissemination. Okay. And locally, excuse me, I'm sorry, but sure. locally in the communities, the sirens will go off as right. well. Right. 
Right. So lots of different ways to get that very important message very quickly mm -hmm. when, that, when that matters to you. Uh, one of the ways that the, the Warning Center practices with communities is a test on a, on a yearly basis, right? Right. How does that work? Thanks for bringing that up. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a controversial issue, but it's super important mm -hmm. to help us warn better and really serve Alaskans. Um, so the week of March 27th, the commemoration of the 1964 right. event, for that week we have a Tsunami Preparedness Week every mm -hmm. year. We like communities to get out and do drills and practice and, and do everything we can to raise awareness. And right. part of that is a live code test where we actually issue the warning message live and we activate the um, emergency alert system, which means sirens go off, the mm -hmm. TV crawler happens, and it's a test, 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 test. We're and doing everything that would normally happen without the real threat of the tsunami, just to, right. to, to practice as much as possible. Right, and this okay. is a major partnership with the state of Alaska, mm -hmm. Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management, the Emergency Operations Center, right. and the Alaska Broadcasters Association. Without the media, we wouldn't be able to do this. So. The three groups really work tightly together to, mm -hmm. to do our best to warn, educate the public that right. this is happening mm -hmm. so they don't wonder and get scared about it. Um, it has been remarkable what we've learned. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it pretty much breaks somewhere every time, sure. but then we fix it and right. it gets better. So a, a quick example is just a few years ago, mm -hmm. we used to, when we issued a message, it would activate the entire state. Right. Right? I mean, Kotzebue, Nome, Bethel, mm -hmm. everybody would be in tsunami warning. And so now we can uh, regionalize it to where the actual event is taking place. Right. That's pretty huge. Right, right. So identifying points of failure and also points of success and making sure we continue down that successful path so that folks are warned as quickly and accurately as possible. Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. you know, to get our communities involved to prep themselves, prep their businesses, right. prep their tourism, prep their schools. You know, just make this a, a, an annual thing they need to be doing. Right. So as citizens uh, wanting to be prepared, we should be prepared to learn more about that test that's uh, happening usually toward the end of March every year. Right. And you should be happy that it's happening. Right. Instead of upset. Definitely be right. happy that it's happening. Right. Just, just as we test tornado sirens in tornado country, we also have to test the tsunami program as well. Right. Because there isn't enough time. You know, for right. a local tsunami, the wave will arrive in less than two minutes. So it's super important that people know what to do. Very good. Mm -hmm. Well, Cindy, thank you so much for helping us know more about the Tsunami Ready Program and the test and the Tsunami Warning Center. It's a very unique and very important job in the National Weather Service that is just fascinating to me every time I visit the office. So it's the only one for the continent. You really should come check it out. It's an international effort. Yes. Wonderful stuff. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Dave. And thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm Dave Snyder. We'll see you next time. Welcome back. Pretty light on the winds here for the inside channels. Light and variable, 10 knots or less. Stevens Passage, though, mostly southeast at 15. South 10 on the south coast. Easterlies 10 to 15 here on the north coast. Seas running just 3 to 4 feet. And for Monday, uh, southerly winds pick up a little bit, not too bad. South 15 turning southeast on the north coast. Seas still uh, pretty low, just 4 feet. Northwest 15 for Stevens Passage. Otherwise, uh, southerlies now 10 to 15 knots, uh, strongest northern Lynn Canal. Prince William Sound tonight, gale warnings out for the night tonight, falling back to 25 knots tomorrow. Southeasterlies at 30 for the North Gulf Coast, seas 10 feet, 25 for uh, the Barrens, and 30 knot winds here from Kachemak Bay all the way up into northern Cook Inlet out of the northeast and then falling back to 15 for Shillikoff Strait. Monday's outlook, uh, east-southeast 15 knots, Kodiak Island and the Barrens. Now we're down to light variable winds for the North Gulf Coast. Easterly still at 20 for Prince William Sound, light southerlies for Cook Inlet. Bristol Bay, north 20, falling back a little bit here as you head down toward Cape Sarachev and north to northwest 15 knots on the south side of the peninsula up toward Sitkanak. For Monday, light variable winds, Bristol Bay on down the north side of the peninsula. And south side, though, northeasterly is 20 knots, 6 to 7 foot seas. The Aleutians, Fox Islands, easterly is 15, picking up to 20 knots here uh, for uh, this island that Nikolsky is on. 20 knots, turning southeast, 20 to 25 central Aleutians. Front right here, southwest, small craft advisories behind that, becoming northwest toward Shimian, a little stronger, but those fall back under small craft advisories, about the same directions with seas hanging on to 12 feet out here in the west. 
South to southeast, uh, 15 knots, turning easterly 15 to 20, mostly across on Alaska Island. And for the uh, southwest coast up to St. Lawrence Island, northerlies 15 knots, seas 3 feet, east 15, Pribilofs and St. Matthew Island. Outlook for Monday, north 20 knots, picking up a little bit there for St. Lawrence Island. And north becomes northeast, south of Nunavak Island there, but only 15 knots, seas not too bad, 3 to 4 feet. East 10, or variable to east 10 for the Pribilofs with 3 foot seas and 20 knots here for St. Matthew Island. And uh, pretty light winds here from uh, Cape uh, Beaufort to Cape Thompson, north 10 on down to the Bering Strait, 20 knots on the western coast, small craft advisories there on the extreme east side toward demarcation point. Those even increase further on Monday coming up to, let's see, 30 knots across the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, central coast coming down to 20, and then 15 to 20 knots here swinging around to the north and northwest. For tonight again, uh, front right through this area, really slow moving, uh, lying parallel to the wind flow, so all that moisture coming northward, rain possibly heavy at times, southern Kenai Peninsula into Seward, up to Whittier, probably even Portage, a chance of rain, Cordova, gusty winds, and again gales tonight for the sound, and then scattered showers inland, staying dry for the Panhandle, but varying amounts of clouds, scattered showers in the north, fair over the Bering Sea, the next front farther out to the west pushes eastward, or no, actually dissipates here, and goes back to the west with this increasing east-southeast flow, not too bad for the eastern Aleutians and the Bering Sea, moderate rain or showers here with an upper level system coming eastward, and again low snow le fall levels, periods of rain continue, the Kenai Peninsula, uh, northward, uh, probably all the way up to the uh, southern slopes of the central Alaska range, a chance of rain and the North Gulf Coast, fair for the Panhandle. And for Monday, another system here pushes rain into the central Aleutians, a threat of there for the eastern Aleutians late. That's a look These at the weather. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.